All right, so if we got Bing to work, great. Now we're going to get Google to work. So you can open a new window or a new web browser, and we will go over to... First, we'll start with google.com slash um, webmaster. Even if you misspell it, it'll work, because it's actually webmasters. But anyway, google.com slash webmasters. Google Webmaster Tools, also now known as Google Search Console, is separate from Google Analytics. On Bing, that there's no separation. Both of the things that Google provide in separate products are integrated in Bing. So we only need to set up the Bing Webmaster Tools, and we get all of this data. On Google, we need to set ourselves up in Webmaster Tools and Analytics. It won't be that complicated but we need to set up both. The main reason for webmasters is get data, tools, and diagnostics for a healthy Google-friendly site. This is the service that will check uh, for your broken links, for you know, viruses on your site, for the health of your site. Analytics is the portion that will show you your hits, the amount of time people spend on your site, you know, the activity on your site. They're separate. Maybe they'll merge them someday. I don't know. But we need to you take advantage of both of these free services. But we need to set them up. So here, let's click Sign In to Search Console. And it'll ask you, sign in with your Gmail account. <coughs> if you don't have a Gmail, you'll have to create an account down here. They're a little bit more strict. If you do create an account here, it will force you to create a Gmail account. Even if you've got Yahoo, it's going to want you to create Gmail. Microsoft was a little nicer. I could have used my Yahoo to access Bing, but I have to create a Gmail account if I'm going to create an account brand new. So now, again, let's take a moment to either sign in with your Gmail or create an account, and then we'll proceed. Yes. Yes. Everybody should have a Gmail account. <laughs> Any account. All that other stuff there, you don't need nah, they all work. They all work. I like, I like my old, old, old Opera Mail account. It still works. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. I have like probably like twelve email addresses. I use them for different things. So let's take a moment here. <laughs> Take a moment to either log in or sign up. This might be smoother for people because many of us have an email account. <laughs> when you sign in, it will either show you a little movie with like a web page with a wrench, you just wait there, or it might show you a slightly different screen. Well, there's the thing you put in the code is a thing where something else, and I was going like, I don't want to do that, so I, I stopped it. Yeah, no, it's a message. That's what I'm saying. That's what they put on the Yeah. Okay. Because this one, see, there's a company that's a lot like mine. They're, they're like, and they come up before I do. I come up before them. Oh, yeah. But they get me on, on Google, but they verify my account. Right. So, I think it's going to work for me. Yeah. I think it's going to work for me. 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 I think it's going to work for me.
So let's go to enter the uh, website. It's, it's, you got to paste in a lot of you don't register. That's how you do it. Okay. So our concept here is once we log in, you might see a, a little video of a web page holds, holding a wrench. Mine doesn't show that because I've already set it up. But if you have that little video, you can play it at some other time. But it's basically telling you, you want to set up Webmaster Tools, Search Console. You want to set it up because then Google will help, uh, will help make your site great. It will help you check broken links if your site, if your server is down, all of that. In order for it to, to start to work, we need to do a verification pretty much like Bing. So there should be a little box that says add your website. Go ahead and type in your website. If we, if we already kind of started it, it says not verified. Where should we go? We'll just wait a moment for us to catch up to that point. Um, so here's the thing before we go further than this that's a little confusing on our address here. Um, let's say I've got a website like this. Let's say I've got a website like this, and I've got a website like this. Is there a difference? No. Yes. Google does see a difference between these two. www.victor.com and victor.com. Google does see a difference between that. So we will have to add both versions, the www version and the non-ww version. Is there a version between victor.com and that victor.com? Yes. You see the little s, secure. So that's a difference as well. Bing, uh, Bing doesn't quite care about that to it. it the WW version and the non-WW is the same. Um, for Google, it does care, WW, non-W, because technically the WWW is a subdomain. Because I could have a website that is www.victor.com or blog.victor.com subdomains. I could have different content there. And Google does track them differently. So if I've got different versions of my site like this, I do want to add them all. We're going to start off simply without the www. It doesn't matter what order we do it, but we're going to add the www version and the non-ww version. And if you've got the secure version, HTTPS, you'll need to add that. Most of us don't have that. It's not free after all. And some of us might even have, you know, something dot your website. So we're just going to start with the plain version of your site. Question. How do you get it? You have to purchase it on a yearly basis, usually. Usually from a provider like Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever. It's usually about 80 to $100 a year. Yes, the search engines also... Google specifically is saying, if you're selling products online where you're taking credit cards and all of that, you might be penalized if you don't have security. So think about that. Yeah. That, that's a good question. This is more for that you're collecting this data right on your website. If you're getting PayPal or another to process that, that is, that's not bad. But if you, on your own site, are trafficking this valuable personal info, B uh, Google at the moment is really recommending for your SEO sake to get HTTPS, to get the security certificate. It's also known as SSL. SSL certificate. Secure socket layer. For the moment, we're going to do this very basically. We're just going to add the main website. So you just have the, the, the PayPal API on your site to be able to HTTPS. Yes, okay. the API you need it there. Yes. I was able to get into Google. Okay, so perfect. I started a new one, and now what do I do? I don't know where to get to where you are here. Do you have a box to add your website? Mm -hmm. That would be right here. 
Exactly. So just go ahead and type that in that box, type the name of your website. Oh. So I typed in the name of my website. I'm going to click continue or submit, whatever your add. button says, add. So I'm going to add my site, the plain old version, http colon slash slash victor.com. just going to add it. You, because you have a brand new account, might also get extra stuff to fill in. Does anyone get like an extra screen of stuff to fill in? Or did you go directly to the verify like me? You went to verify. Good. If it's asking for a few more things, again, you'll have to fill in a few more things. Okay, well, uh, I think we're in the same spot here, so, so watch this. It's asking me here, verify the site. Recommended method, alternate method. In my case, like Bing told me, download this file, upload it to my site, verify. Well, if I didn't do it that way through Bing, I have the alternate methods. I have HTML tag, like Bing. So if, if I helped you and we did it through some HTML tag, it might be under the alternate method. Sometimes they, they mix this up. They might have put it into your recommended method. Basically, find either the method of downloading a file or HTML tag and do it the same way we did it for Bing a little while ago. If it's asking for these other ways, that's the number three way on Bing that I don't recommend. Just don't do that way. If you've got Google Analytics already set up, you can get Google Analytics to vouch for you here. If you've got Google Tag Manager already set up, you can do that method. Um, if you're following exactly long in this class, we don't have Google Analytics yet. We haven't talked about it. But if you've done it previously, you might could use it if you want. I'm going to go with the HTML tag method like I did before. There's my line of code. I need to paste it exactly how I showed most of you. So again, we'll take a quick moment for a pause. It'll probably go faster this time. Either method that it tells you here, and then click Verify. And we'll proceed. Just a moment. You don't need any help. Just one moment. Yeah. 
there's there's the minimum that you have to do um, what you're saying. Just where, where do I put it? Okay, um, this is, I, you're gonna, how, how would you, well, I don't remember, you were saying that you have the issue where you can't get a hold of this guy to work on the site, right? Do you have your login information yourself to be able to edit your site? Yeah, I own this. So yeah, because it's edit. Edit. Okay. I don't think it's not so. Easy to Okay, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a vote of a lot right there. Because he sees some way to I have this So this is shared together without listening to the Okay, so you, you bought it, right? I just bought it, paid for the domain. But from which company? Okay, are you able to log into one in one internet, the control panel? Yes. Let's go ahead and do it. Well, let me come back in a little bit. All you need to do is fill out that login information, and then once we log in, we'll have a space to complete the task. Let me come back in a bit. If you can find me, sort of a negative thing, then this is probably what something I should do once I have all the information. So I can follow it with what you have here. Sure. And then if there's just me, but I can get everything right here because I have, I've got those things I have. So, you know, it's like here, I can see how to do that. Not a problem. So it's probably the best thing in the system. Now that it's a class on it, yeah, I'll just, I'll just watch the video. Anyone else? Were you able to get that uh, accomplished? Anyone need any help? Okay, so again, uh, if you got Bing to work, Google Webmaster Google Search Console is very similar. You would go back and you would verify. Here's where you would get the green check mark. But after you checked it, um, and then I think you're going to get a screen. After you verify it, uh, what does it look like? Let's just confirm by clicking on uh, Search Console at the top left. That'll take you back. 
Search Console. So again, I run this for a variety of clients, so I have a lot of them listed here. I really hate how Google keeps rearranging this and it never remembers. I want it in alphabetical order, but it always changes it. It never saves it. Anyway, you've probably just got one website, but notice this client, akiasikspoko.com, www.akiasikspoko.com. Some people visit the website by typing akiasikspoko.com. And some people visit the website by typing www.akiasikspoko.com. So Google will track data from both of those. We added the plain one without www. To add the www version, add a new property. We're not going to do it right now, but you need to do that. And if you've got also the HTTPS version, the secure version, you're going to need to add two more. HTTPS www, HTTPS non www. So it's going to track four versions of your site, technically. And if you've got something like blog.mywebsite.com, that's another subdomain that if you wanted to track that info, you want to set that up. Let's say we did set it up. This screen is very basic. It's not going to show you too much info. You might see a messages screen. You want to look at those messages at some point. It'll tell you extra tips. Don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Um, or there's problems with your site. Um, you can look at that on your own. What I'm going to do is, you've got probably one website set up. There's your one website. You want to you want to click on the name of your website. That's the same as manage your property. Uh, but notice manage your property has other options you can do here, such as delete the site. But usually you're just going to click on the name of your site. And again, if you just set this up, you're not going to see very much. But uh, the longer you have this set up, the more data it will give you. So you have a column of crawl errors, search analytics, and sitemaps with more detailed data. And as it collects this data, you'll see some stuff like this. At a glance, there's no site errors. So one of the big reasons why we've got Webmaster Tools set up is it will tell us what kind of errors exist on your site, like broken links. So there's 30 broken links possibly right here. It'll tell me exactly what those links are when I dig deeper. There's, not, there's none of these other issues here. Sitemap. This particular site has a lot of content, and it sees 135 files, web pages and images. You can also see and check for broken images. This has got five warnings. I can go look at it and see what the problem is. Um, Pop-ups might happen here to give you advice. And then search analytics. 3,000 total clicks. So I didn't... Actually, I still have it here. So just very quickly to compare that client on both the search engines. Um, So this particular client on both search engines, on Bing, 208 clicks in this time period, on Google, 3,000. So big difference about traffic, of course. Was it a the time period was this time period on Google Search. Notice I don't have an option to set it. So I believe it's just month at a time. The question about why? Well, Google's got 80% market share, 60% uh, market share, and Bing only has 20. So those numbers are simply going to be skewed that way because I'm getting more traffic through Google than through Bing just because of the sheer numbers. But 208 hits is still nothing to sneeze at. It's still traffic coming to the website. And if 10% you know, of those are sales, that could be lots of money coming into my site. So I want both of them set up. I want to track the data of both. This is Google showing traffic going through Google, and this is Bing showing traffic going through Bing. And I want to know both. I can go into detail also. Okay, what are those broken links? I can click on crawl errors. That'll just open up a screen somewhere on one of these many sub-screens, and it'll tell me, okay, these are some, this is the, this is the one month of data about these broken links, and there's some of these things that are broken. Sometimes we get these broken links because we have events that happen that then the event, the event is over, but Google is still searching for that link. So 
the cool thing is here, once you fix the link on your website, you come back to Google and you say, okay, this event is over, it's done, it's fixed. Select it, mark is fixed. That's been fixed. So I have to go through these other ones. But um, then this is our chart of what's going on in this time period. We were fixing these broken links, and then there's a few appearing now because of some of these events that run out, and we forget to fix it here. Yes? Now, for events that stop on your website, and Google sees it as a broken link, is it bad to keep stuff up from before? Or like, are you, should you change them? Is it bad simply because Google doesn't find it? Right. Because if you wanted to show, okay, I had these events in 2015, you know, so people can see things later on, is it, would it be bad to keep them on your site, though? It might not be bad, but our particular client here has a specific kind of event that is a time-sensitive event. You wouldn't want to show this event anymore because it's over. So with this particular client, we do want to mark it as fixed, that it doesn't exist anymore, don't pay attention to it. But if you keep events that have happened before on your particular site, it might not matter. And just because I've got 30 broken links doesn't mean now I'm on 12th place, 12th yeah, page. Just you know, like sometimes, uh, you, you know, as like a reference, okay, for 2015, I like guess 2016 now, 2015 we had 30 events, these are all the events we had last year. Just so you can all, not to go sign up or go to, but you can just tell that, okay, they were busy last year. Uh, SEO wise, I don't think it'll be a problem. Broken links are something we want to fix, but they're not the only indicator or detriment to your SEO. So if you do fix them or redirect them and such, um, that will just fix the broken link aspect of it, which would be good, but depending on how your site is set up and what it needs to show, it might not matter that I've got 30 broken links. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, let's say we have a subdomain in our to my knowledge, a subdomain is something.victor.com. You seem to have just asked if it was victor.com slash something. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a subdomain. So that's you won't you won't submit that. If it was something.victor.com, that's a subdomain, and that's what you would submit. So if it was like blogger.whatever the blog is called. Yes. Or like wordpress.com. If it's a slash, it's not a subdomain. But if it's blog.victor.com, that's a subdomain. But if it's victor.com slash blog, that's not a subdomain. It's a subdirectory, but not a subdomain. Um, this is cool because. Nowadays, more and more people are using a smartphone, some sort of mobile device, to visit websites. Google is going to tell me here problems on the desktop if someone is visiting on a, on a, on a desktop or on a smartphone. So look at this. We fixed all the smartphone problems. So there's a few ones we need to deal with for the desktop. And then feature phone, those are those older phones that, you know, that, that don't have... It, I always thought it was funny that they call them feature phones, yet they have no features. <laughs> they don't have the they don't have the touch screen. They don't have the apps. They don't have all of that. But they call so them like feature phones. Phone. Flip phone. I would call them flip phones, even though they don't flip anymore. But yeah, feature phones mean the dumb phones. They don't want to call them dumb phones. These are smartphones. Well, what's not smart? Dumb phones. What well, they call them feature phones. So we've got a few problems here. Uh, two broken links, which need to be fixed. Again, events because these pass. Go back to the dashboard. Uh, we'll look at these in more detail once we get more data, hopefully. But um, just looking briefly to compare with to compare where do they put it to compare with Bing about those keywords. Oh, here it is. Uh, simply under search analytics, site traffic search analytics. This is showing clicks um, through this time period of one month, clicks to the website from Google search. I can look at it through filters about devices and such, etc. Clicks. We'll go into this detail later, but again, here's this 
here's another aspect of the, 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 the keywords, the long tail keywords. So if people search the name of the website, they get the website. So it's the highest ranked one. But on the first day of class, we talked about that that's a false search. What else is next? Texcoco restaurant. Okay, it's still the name of the restaurant. Third keyword, Huitla Coche. How many of you know what Huitla Coche is? If you don't know what that is, it is uh, it goes by many names. One, the nicest name is is the uh, Mexican truffle. Other names for it are corn smut. Uh, basically, what it is, it's a fungus that infects corn that turns it from yellow to like these amazing shades of gray and blue and such. And it's a delicacy. This restaurant serves it. You saute it up in some butter, put it in a taco. It's good. You know, humans eat everything, even fungus growing from corn. So in other countries, this is a delicacy, like Mexico. This is one of the few restaurants in the in San Diego that serves sweet la coche. So people are searching this on Google. What sweet la coche? Or just that keyword. And that's one of the top hits to the website. We take advantage of that because we have a blog post. What is sweet la coche? Um, that blog post is actually part of the driver of so much traffic from that keyword. Checking the statistics on Google Analytics, we see that the Wheat La Coche blog post is one of the most visited pages on the site. Home page, menu, the Wheat La Coche blog. Another top hit is pulque. Pulque is an alcoholic beverage that the restaurant serves. Another 99 clicks from that. Barbacoa, maguey, Wheat La Coche taste. So we're seeing there a long tail keyword. What if we tweet a few things? and pictures or videos or something of using the keyword we like what you taste. That could get more traffic as well. Uh, and it goes on and on and on, even down to you know, one click from a keyword. <coughs> so we'll look at that in more detail next time. Hopefully when you start to gather some data, you want to set it up as soon as you can because it will gather the data from the time you set it up. We're going to look at the third thing in just a moment. Any questions at this point? The third part of these webmaster tools is Google Analytics. This was the search console previously known as simply Google Webmaster Tools. I still call it that all the time because I'm used to it for, you know, five years, seven years with that name and now I think sometime in the middle of 2015, they changed it to Google Search Console. So now we're, all of us old timers have to remember it by its new name. But now over here on our web browser, let's go to google.com slash analytics. A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-C-S, Google Analytics. And again, these links are all in that PDF that I gave you. Google.com slash analytics. We'll need to do a little bit of setup here. It's a little bit different than the previous ones. And I do have to say, unfortunately, if you've got a wordpress.com website, you can't do this. If you've got a wordpress.org, meaning you've got victor.com on my website instead of victor.wordpress.com. If I've got a wordpress.com site, this won't work. It's not compatible. Wordpress.com provides you with its own statistics. But if you've got Squarespace, this should work, and Weebly, and the Dreamweaver Builder, this works on everything except the WordPress.com. To my knowledge, they might have changed it. But we'll go to google.com slash analytics, you'll need to sign in again, top right corner. This is our first thing here that's different, it, it was simply sign in. But now we've got Google Analytics, Google Analytics Premium, Google Tag Manager, and Adometry. Tag Manager is where we go to look up how much does it cost on Google to buy that keyword pulque. Kind of like how we saw it integrated into Bing. Right on Bing it said this keyword costs that amount. Google, it's all of these products are spread out on a bunch of websites. Yeah. That's one of their big problems. And so the Tag Manager is where you would go to look up the prices of Google Words. And, and here when we go to Google.com Analytics, we log into plain old free analytics, Google Premium, just came out last year sometime. I haven't researched it enough to tell you what's good or bad about it, but probably because it's premium and you pay for it, it's better somehow. I don't know just yet. Does anyone have any experience with Google Analytics Premium here? 
No. All right. And then atometry also, there's just so many hours in the day to learn something. I don't know what that is. So don't, don't ask me. We're going to go into Google Analytics. Since I've already got an account set up, it's going to look all complete and complicated and such. But let me see what it looks like for you guys when you're brand new. Does it look like you're brand new? Even a brand new account, it'll have three buttons that say one, two, and three sign up code. And click that sign up button if you get three items. Okay, so um, your screen, let, my, let me make my screen look like your screen, but before that, there's a, going to be a little confusion. Um, well, actually, let me show you. You probably have a screen that looks like this now, right? New account? Here's the confusion. Here's the confusion. It's asking a new account, but I thought I have an account. Why is it asking for a new account? This is the confusion. When you've got it set up like me, I work with many clients. I keep them organized into different folders. Google counts those folders as accounts. So you can make as many of these folders as accounts as you want. And for a particular client, a particular client might have a website, they might have a YouTube, they might have an Etsy, whatever, they might have different Webs, they might have different properties. So that's what that screen is saying there. The account name is the topmost level of organization. It's the folder. What's the name of the folder to hold all of your websites? All your properties. Account and property. That's what you're seeing here. I've got this account and this property. Uh, <laughs> Our version of Safari is really old, so I don't like it either. Well, I'm using it on my laptop. Oh, sorry. Uh, sign okay. In. okay, so here then, it, you can decide how to fill this in, but as I said, I work with different clients. So I have the name of the client. Let's say John Smith Farms. That's the name of the client, the name of the folder. And then I'm going to track the data of the main website. So you can put in the name of your company, and we're going to track the data of your main website. Because later I can add another property to this account. John Smith Farms is also on YouTube, so I'll say YouTube channel. I'm going to track the data that's coming from the YouTube channel. I'm going to track the data coming from the app and other sources. Here, I'll just put main website. You just type main website, <coughs> name, like that name. Is that what you should type? You can type whatever you want, but that's how I'm doing it because I'm saying I'm tracking the main website of yeah. this client. Can you map that website URL? We don't have to put the HTTP port the stuff that we're talking Exactly. About. Here you select HTTP or secure HTTP. And here it's not going to care www or non-www, even though the little tip here shows a www. Uh, as a matter of fact, the little tip even tells you put the HTTP, even though here's the HTTP. So they got to update that. Here, select your protocol, and then your website. doesn't need www, but your website. So I'm going to say John Smith Farms. Or you could just say your website, and you don't have to type the HTTP. No. It's already got the it's already got the toggle. Okay. 
industry category. There's a few industries here. The point of this is to, it's going to collect a lot of data. And so for you to see your data in the most effective way, if you choose one of these industries, it will show you that data a little more tailored to you. Maybe if I'm an arts and entertainment company, and I want it to show me by default more easily the, um, the particular screen about conversions. This can be changed. There's no wrong answer, really. But you should select the industry that you best fit into, or if it doesn't fit into anything, just put, ca uh, just put other at the very bottom. Time zone should be correct. And then here, compared to Google Search Console, I would recommend you turn all of these off. On Google Search Console, I say leave them on because I want to know the health of my site. This is not related to that at all. This is other stuff. Would you like to share your data with Google products, with benchmarking, with tech support, with account specialists? I'm going to say no. It's okay. We can turn it on whenever we need it. You can change it how you want. Question? So here I'm saying, keep my data only in analytics. Don't share it over to my other services. Um, don't send my data anonymously to compare my site with other sites, benchmarking. Don't send my data to tech support. Don't send my data to account specialists, which are the people that are going to say, why don't you pay for this and you'll get a better experience. Yeah, so you can turn that all off and you won't. We can turn it on again a little later. I'll show that screen, but I'm going to recommend you can turn these off. If tech support needs to help you at that moment, they can turn it on. So it's okay if you turn it off here. You can have up to 100 properties that you're tracking. So click Get Tracking ID. Then there's this Terms of Service to Read. I haven't read it very recently, but basically it says you're not going to abuse the service, reverse engineer the code, your data is confidential, privacy, all of that. Accept it or not. If you don't, you can't use it. Click Accept. Google Analytics is excellent, but it's very confusing. There's lots to look at. We'll start to look at, to look at it a little bit today, a little bit more next time. I've also got on Fridays my advanced Google class. We look at it there also some more. The Google lecture is in two weeks because this Friday is the YouTube lecture. In two weeks on Friday, 9.30 a.m., we have another side of Google Analytics. To have this fully set up, we need to sort of do the same um, verification like we did for Webmaster Tools uh, and being in Google. Here though, it's going to be a little bit different because it wants us to copy this whole, there's only one way to do it, to copy this whole chunk of code and paste it into our website. So the way that I showed you, for most of us that we had to copy and paste that code, that's how you have to do it again. For those of us that I showed you upload a file, I'll have to show you a slightly different way in the lab time in a moment. So you copy and paste this into all of the pages you want to track. But if you're using a modern site builder like WordPress or Squarespace, it relies on templates. So once you save it in the right place, it applies to every page. Because this is going to track information for all of your pages. Um, and there's no button here then that says verify. There's no button that then says come back and click verify. It'll start working by itself. Within about 48 hours, when you come back to this screen, it'll say receiving data. But here's one of the many confusing things. How do I get back to this screen? Because when you log in for the first time, I mean when you log in, when you get back home, it's going to look like this. So let me show you this before you try to go verify this. Let me show you this so you're going to, you're going to lose this screen. On the very top, it's showing that we're in the admin screen. Click on Home. You got Home, Reporting, Customization, Admin. Home will show you all your accounts and properties. Reporting, which we'll look at in more detail next time, 
will show you all your data. Customization. We have so many different screens of data to look at, we can customize it to only show us quickly what we want. And admin is where we deal with some of these settings. So I jumped over to home just to get away from that screen, but I'll click back on admin because the admin screen is a three column screen full of lots of stuff. This first screen here affects the whole account, John Smith Farms. The second one here affects the one website in detail. And then this one affects actual screens of content of this website, part of this account. So if I get fired and I can no longer work with that client, um, I can be removed as a manager. You thought I was going to go trash it, huh? No, I'm just going to remove myself from that account. But if you need to trash the data, you can. Under account settings is where you can go back to turn on those data sharing settings. You can explore all of these settings. You won't break anything just by looking at them. But what you will see that if you click on any one of these buttons within a column, it then changes to only show you that content of that column. You have to click this little back button to show you all three columns. Because then under the property column, I can go look at user management to add more users to help me edit this or view this data, the boss, let's say, or other people of this company. Go back. And then I can go in and create filters for the data. I can go in and create conversions. We don't have time to talk about it. We've got goals here, conversion goals. We can set up these conversion goals in Google to help us really see if we're being effective. We might talk about it next time, but we'll probably talk about it in the Friday class if you take it. But the thing I want to show you here is, is, um, is most important is under the admin, under the property, under the JS, the JavaScript tracking info, tracking code, that's where you get back to the screen to get back to that code to check, is it working? There's no button that says verify. You should copy this code into your site, wait about 48 hours, come back to Google Analytics, come to this screen, and it'll tell you up here, receiving data. And then when we come back, we'll look at the reporting screen with all of the data that it's telling us. It's a lot of data. How many hits, the keywords, most popular page, how much time did someone spend on a page? What country and language did they, did they come from? And what, and what to do with that data? Next time. Today was the day to talk about the marketing strategy and to set up all of these tools. And it might be time consuming, but I don't think it's hard. I think it's just time consuming. Once we've set it up and it starts tracking the data, we can do stuff with the data. And that'll be something we'll talk about next time. So general questions on anything we talked? Yes? Okay, who's tracking? I see it's here the JavaScript. Mm -hmm. uh, then down below has an optional PHP. It's, it says here they're going to put an into a PHP into It's going to call them. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's either or. If you cannot do it with the JavaScript method, you have to do it with the PHP method. I see. So either or. Okay, it's just another method. Another method, okay. yes. yes. Any other general questions? <clears throat> okay, so um, that'll be it for the moment. We have a little bit of lab time up to 4 o'clock, but I do ask that we, we kind of went a little long, but I do ask that we wrap it up by four because I've got to be traffic back down to Chula Vista. Um, so that's it for the moment. Uh, when we come back next time, we'll do more Google and Bing.